Good evening, and welcome back to UI7 News election night coverage. I'm Chris Kennedy. He's got a strong arm, he's accurate, and I think he has the most upside for the Illini. The current action plan would renovate and expand the county satellite jail in East Urbana, while this facility, a jail in downtown Urbana, currently remains closed. 64 degrees, partly sunny, partly cloudy, but a great day to go out, enjoy the quad, enjoy all the campus has to offer in the fall. And that's the game plan for the rest of the week. There's been heavy turnout here at the Illini Union in Urbana. Election judges have reported that voters are waiting up to 35 minutes to cast their ballots. The Chicago Cubs face a must-win game tonight in Cleveland. It's game six of the World Series, and it's win or go home for the National League champs. For nearly two weeks of Paralympic competition, Illinois athletes have traded in this track near the campus of South Farms for the Olympic Stadium in South America. Colleges Against Cancer will be stationed here, outside Engineering Hall on Green Street, for Thursday's event. This election day, one referendum asking for a small tax increase is causing a big stir in the community. The Champaign County Facilities Tax is a proposed quarter cent sales tax that would raise money for a slew of renovations for county facilities. In the current action plan, the revenue would be used for deferred maintenance, renovation of the county jail, replacement of the sheriff's office, a new community behavioral health center, repairs to the county nursing home, and other functions, such as a rehaul of the county's information technology systems and a relocation of county offices to downtown Urbana. County Administrator Rick Snyder developed the action plan. He says the tax would cost the median household about $18.35 per year. It doesn't include necessities like food, medicine, and title vehicles that would create a burden on lower income families. And, uh, repairs for things like uh, the courthouse, for the uh, sheriff's office, um, for the nursing home basically all the facilities that are used to deliver services to the public. The most vocal criticism of the plan comes from those who see it as a jail tax. The current action plan would renovate and expand the county's satellite jail in East Urbana, while this facility, a jail in downtown Urbana, currently remains closed. The group, Build Programs Not Jails, has loudly opposed the tax increase. If they believe it would only add to the area's incarceration problem. One activist is being says spent. the action plan And then for me the personally, I have a problem with a uh, sales tax that has no contract with the community members. So if you can just ask for a pool of money and then change the plan, take away the plan, add to the plan um, at will after you've gotten that money, I have a problem with that. The group believes that the county needs to invest in alternatives to incarceration, such as mental health and detox facilities. The plan is expected to raise $48 million. It would expire after 12 years. In Urbana, I'm Chris Kennedy, UI7 News. You won't find the U of I's most dominant athletic program at Memorial Stadium or the State Farm Center. You'll have a hard time finding them on campus right now, as most of the Illinois wheelchair track team is competing at the Paralympic Games in Rio. More than 20 Illinois athletes and alumni have made the trip to compete and win at the highest level of their sport. In every major Paralympic championship since 2006, Illinois athletes have brought home more than 30% of Team USA's total medals. Illinois has sent athletes to the game since their inception in 1960. Four-time Paralympian Jean Driscoll has won 12 medals and eight Boston marathons. And a lot of the students who are here, their goal is to be a competitive Paralympic athlete and to medal in, in at least one, if not more, Paralympic Games. Ariel Rawson is a senior on the wheelchair track team with her sights set on Tokyo 2020. She trains here at the U of I's official Paralympic training. So and then just training with a group of athletes every day who are Paralympians and in Rio right now is very, very amazing. And you have like these amazing role models. And One role model is alumna Tatiana McFadden, a star in wheelchair track. She'll compete in seven events from the 100 to the marathon. She won gold in the 400 meters on Sunday and competes in the 1500 today. Driscoll still gets chills thinking back to her Paralympic experience. I was so intensely proud to represent the U.S. and even even more so intensely proud to represent the University of Illinois. We need to do another For nearly two weeks of Paralympic competition, Illinois athletes have traded in this track near the campus of South Farms for the Olympic Stadium in South America. Tomorrow marks day seven of Paralympic action in Rio. In Champaign, I'm Chris Kennedy, UI7 News. The Eastern Illinois Food Bank is fighting hunger in a new way this year with the first ever Day of Giving. Donations were collected last Tuesday to help feed the people of Champaign-Urbana and the rest of the region. The event is a combination of several drives for the food bank. Vice President of Development Julie Melton says the Day of Giving is the food bank's biggest event. It happens during the year's biggest donation period. Melton says the food bank gets about half of its total donations from November to January. 
but the day of giving and holiday season donations are just part of a greater effort. Hunger is year round. It is not, it is not a cold weather type of issue. People, um, people are experiencing hunger for different reasons throughout, you know, sickness, job loss, all those different things. And for many, um, for many individuals, it's just the season of their life that they're trying to get through. Feed America indicates Champaign County had the state's fifth highest food insecurity rate in 2012. It means many don't have access to enough nutritious and affordable food. A recent food bank study says one in five people in Eastern Illinois use its services. More than 200 agencies get food from the food bank. 250 people get a daily hot lunch and more at Champagne's Daily Bread Soup Kitchen. Former President Ellen McDowell says the kitchen provides food, but most importantly, friendship. McDowell says people look away if they see a homeless man on Green Street. It's different when they come to Daily Bread. A person like that kind of loses their anonymity. They, they become a person there. Danny Hosey is a regular at Daily Bread. He says he's grateful for the food and friendship. Hosey says the hard times of homelessness can strike at any moment. Is, it can hit at any part of life where life's emotions, life's circumstances build up too much for the hustle bustle build of life and crash. Hosey has lived all over the country, but now he'll be staying in Champaign because he knows there's help available to him here. In Champaign, I'm Chris Kennedy, UI7 News. Well, I think the guy the fans want to see is Wes Lunt, the transfer from Oklahoma State. But the coaches have insisted it's an open competition because Lunt did not blow anyone away at the spring game. He's challenged by Riley O'Toole, a senior who's waited his turn behind Nathan Chiahas for three years, and true sophomore Aaron Bailey, who got a lot of looks running the ball last year. Coaches love his versatility, but I think it'll be Lunt in the end. We're getting into late October, and Halloween weather is bringing some spine-tingling chills and maybe some rain. It's going to be warm, but cool enough for you to put on your flannel, sip on your pumpkin spice latte. 66 in Chicago, 76 in Kansas City. Good evening. I'm Chris Kennedy. And I'm Billy Hatfield. A fellow Big Ten University is recovering from an unexpected tragedy that struck campus. One issue on the ballot today is a countywide facility sales tax. The proposed 0.25% tax increase may seem small, but where the money is going is causing some big controversy. The holiday season means more and more organizations are urging you to donate. Coming up, find out how to not be fooled by fake charities. This week marks U of I's 106th homecoming football game. But first, let's meet the interns. Chris Kennedy, University of Illinois, Clarendon Hills, Illinois.